Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. So I'm going to be doing a just a straight get ready with me. So I wanted to take this video, the purpose of this video is just to kind of explain my end of year because I honestly am kind of tired of the past two months and I am just ready for it to all go away but uh, while putting on some makeup. So it'll just be a mix of products that I have yet to try and some products that I like. I don't think there's going to be anything particularly special or flashy here. My lips are really dry so I'm just going to put on some lip balm. I'll use the Ben a balm this time. I was extracting a pimple and it just started bleeding like crazy, so that's what this spot is. I do have a feeling it might scar a little bit, but yeah, I don't know what I don't know what caused that. That happens sometimes, I guess. When I planned out my Black Friday purchases, I had everything scheduled and then schedule slip happened, and now I'm just kind of kicking myself for buying what I perceive as too much. Like I feel like I wasted some of my money, but there was no real way for me to know what was coming. It's kind of trying to take it easy. If anything, it'll just be a good way for me to kind of put the pump the brakes in the next two months or so, where I'm just like, whoa, 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 don't go buying anything. You gotta catch up on your queue. Like, even though it's not new, new, people are still gonna want to watch if the content is good, if the look is creative. At first, I was like, oh my goodness, now I have to play catch up, but there's nothing to- I'm just trying to remember, so there's nothing to catch up to. There's no race and nobody's trying to- if I cover less, I buy less. That's probably a good thing anyways. I haven't even gotten my vacation videos off my phone yet. I was gonna do a vacation vlog for you guys of just a bunch of short clips of where I went, and I haven't even done that yet because my life just came crashing down when I got back. So I haven't even done that yet, but I, I think at first I'm thinking my first reaction is, oh, I don't think I'm going to put those up, but I think I will, and I will just have them dated accordingly. Yeah, I, I was thinking, no, I don't want to, but I think I will just go ahead and make myself do it. Okay, so it's, it is really dry right now. I'm, I'm filming the Tuesday after Christmas. In the context of this video, it's been really cold, so it's very dry. So I'm going to put on some setting spray because my, I'm going to put on my Dialba setting spray so that I can kind of get my skin to perk up a little bit. I've not run into a setting spray as hydrating as this one. The closest equivalent I can think of is the hangover setting spray, which I, but that one, the sprayer was just too aggressive. I really like this one. And I used the Bobbi Brown hydrating eye cream and I used the Dominique Cosmetics primer. The discontinued one, I still don't have a dupe for. I think today I'm just gonna go in with Luminous Silk. I do use uh, shade two. I'm, I saw, I caught wind that there is going to potentially be some uh, cur color correctors coming out from Givenchy. They're gonna come out mm. with a they're gonna come out with a Prisme Libre concealer line that's going to have color correctors. I saw the leaked images and I am foaming at the mouth for them because. I cannot believe how difficult it has been to find color correctors <laughs> to try and figure out which color corrects my under eye dark circles. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna buy the LA Girl ones because they do seem to have some really light ones and if those are not light enough, um, they do also sell a white mixer. I was gonna get one from Kimchi Chic Beauty, but I think I'll just go ahead and spend a couple, like the four bucks per corrector from LA Girl and I'll get a couple different ones. Like I'll get the mint one, I'll get the blue one, I'll get the yellow one and I'll see which one works best and then I'll spend more money on the nice ones. So anyways, I should probably go one topic at a time and hopefully I am able to not ramble too much. So for concealer, I'm going to use the Luna Lasting Tip Concealer. I am interested in finding full coverage liquid concealers to use instead of my cream one when my under eyes get really dry. I also recently watched Minsko's video on concealing dark circles. That was really helpful. But I did notice I already kind of do a lot of what she does, so I don't know how helpful it was. I'm also going to take the concealer up higher. We'll see if this does anything. I may have put too much on this time. Yeah, I do that a lot though. Okay, yeah, so you see how when I look down, you can still kind of see the groove? That's like what bothers me the most. It's kind of a- these two products don't play too well together. There's kind of a line going on, so I'm gonna take a little bit extra, add some extra coverage here. And for that, I'll go into my sponge. I think that's a little bit better, so now I've just generally brightened up the interior of my face while the outside is pretty much the same. I'm gonna put on some more setting spray. 
and I think I'm just going to dab a little bit of powder under my eyes. So I'm going to use the flower nose powder. I've not really been talking about the products I'm using in this video, but oh, so I'll say it now, flower nose. <laughs> and I'm just using my It Cosmetics It Brushes for Ulta Dual Ended Brush. And I'm just gonna, I'm just using the powder just to make sure that nothing moves, but I'm only using a little bit. This flower nose powder is by far kind of my favorite setting and mattifying and stuff because it's so non-drying. I'm just gonna put a little bit kind of in the spots where I want it to be more matte. I'm gonna put on some eye primer. I'm just gonna use a very tiny dab of the Rare Beauty eye primer. And I'm only using a tiny, tiny bit. Like I'm not even really spreading it across my entire eyelid because I'm gonna be using my, using new Pat McGrath palette I haven't tried yet and we'll see how it holds up with just a little bit of primer. Okay, so I'm gonna put on my eyebrows and for that I'm just going to use Precisely My Brow and Brow Flick. So first things first, after I got back from my vacation, I did buy the Givenchy Prisme Libre Loose Blushes from Feel Unique. I hadn't bought them in forever because I had hoped that they would eventually see a US release and then it would be easier for me to get a hold of. I've never seen them come to the US market and then I heard that they were a limited edition where they were released. So when Feel Unique had them for, I think it was like 25% off, I just went ahead and got the three lightest shades that I've been wanting. And that was the end of it, right? Well, I placed the order at the end of October and it came to be right before Christmas. I, I never saw them. And I have been checking the tracking and it was shipping by FedEx within the continental US. But on November 18th, the tracking updated to in transit in Texas and then it never updated again. So my package is lost. And so finally, before Christmas, it had been missing for about 37 days, which is outside the 30 day range it has to be missing for before Feel Unique will interact with you. <laughs> uh, I filed a report on my account that this package never arrived and I got a reply back. Only two days later, I got a reply back. Their customer service is really good. They had deemed my package lost and they refunded me. And by that time, the lightest shade, the one I wanted the most out of the three, is sold out and it's sold out everywhere. I checked everywhere. The blush, first of all, is pretty much impossible to find at this point. It's only, but I only could find it on Harrods. I found it on eBay, but I feel like you can never promise that you're getting something like legit. I know eBay doesn't allow you to sell fakes, but I bought something off there once and I swear it wasn't fake, but it was definitely expired. So I just don't really like to buy makeup off eBay if I can help it, unless it's like certain K-beauty products from sellers that I know are good. So I could only get it off Harrods, which means paying 30 shipping instead of free shipping. And it also means, and also I couldn't get the lightest shade. So I only got the two lightest shades besides 01, which is really bummed me out that that's like, it's not the end of the world, but it was definitely really frustrating because it was like the one thing I got during the Black Friday season that I was the most excited for was those loose blushes because I love loose blushes and not even being shipped internationally got lost in Texas. I guess I can't say I'm surprised. Oh, and it also got lost by FedEx, which again, I guess I can't say I'm surprised. This is what happens when you treat your workers like trash and don't pay them enough. So that was the first thing. That was one of the things that happened. That was probably the like the smallest thing that happened, but on, on top of everything else happening in December, I was just like, it just kind of was like not really fun to add to the pile. But then the other thing that happened was that I did end up having to say goodbye to my oldest cat, Buster Brown. It has the same seal point color that my other Siamese Deuce and one of my other Siamese Gates is kind of the same shape and size as he was. A little less like spherical because Buster was super stocky. Um, Gates is a little bit more kind of normal shaped, quote unquote. But like I'll see him walk by and if he's trundling by at like kind of a more easy going pace where he's kind of just like wandering around, I like keep assuming it's Buster and I'll turn around to look and then I realize it's Gates and it like kind of just makes me sad. So like I keep having that happen to me or like I'll hear snoring and it's from Gates but it sounds like Buster because Buster used to snore so that was that's not really been really super easy to deal with looking back he was kind of starting to go downhill in November but it went really quickly like everything happened really really fast so like he was doing fine up until he wasn't and then he wasn't very very quickly so it's not like I really knew what was I didn't know what was gonna happen now like I know back this spring I had thought to myself oh I don't know if he'll make it to see the end of this year but that was just kind of more thinking and passing I wasn't really super serious about it and as time went on, I presumed I would have him around for like another year or so. And then suddenly, very, very suddenly, literally like two days before, like maybe, no, four days before I the day came, he just 
started just suddenly going downhill really quickly and that was when I made the appointment and everything. But it was just weird, I guess. It's kind of weird not having him around. Yeah, with everything that happened with him, I just fell really far behind. I just didn't really have energy to film and I obviously am grieving. And so I kind of, my behavior and my mood gets really erratic when I'm grieving. So that was hard. He was a good boy. One of the things that I did get among many so this is going to be something I'm using for the first time today is going to be the Pat McGrath eyeshadow palette in Nude Allure. I like kind of coin flipped to see which one I would use and this is the one. I don't think I really wanted to use this one today. I would have rather coin flipped the other one. But it's really pretty. It supposedly is like a, from what I hear, it's like a differentish formula than the usual mothership. So I'm certainly interested in seeing what gets spit out onto my eyes for lack of a better word so um there's only one mat in here but that's completely fine i can work with that so i'm going to go ahead and just use that chocolate brown i don't know how they'll be friend i thought when i first saw them that maybe they'd be marketed as like similar to the bare minerals bouncy shadows from a long time ago i don't know if anyone remembers those bouncy eyeshadow palettes for some reason i thought they'd be similar to that where they're gonna be like cream to powder. That's the only reason I could imagine them being marketed as a different formula, but the matte is like super powdery instead. Way more powdery than her usual mattes, which have very little kick up and tend to be feel a little bit more dry and be more harder pressed. This one has tons of kickback in the pan if you dig your brush in too hard, so I guess it's powderier instead. The Star Wars ones are on their way to me and I'll definitely prioritize those as well as Natasha Denona Pastel. I knew ahead of time though that I would would want to do the Pat McGrath one. I was hoping that by then I would have caught up. But yeah, I first got him when he was 15. His previous owner was a very elderly veteran. And when he had to go to VA, he had to give up all his cats and he had a lot of cats and he loved cats. So Buster ended up at the shelter that I volunteer at. And Buster was one of the cats that he had raised since kittenhood. And I've always had such a thing for older cats. Like I'm not a kitten person. I like my kittens when I can hold them in my hands, but the moment they get bigger than two hands, I'm like, okay, let's get you fixed and let's get you out of here. <laughs> I'm not the kind of person who appreciates their energy. They're too much for me, but I love senior cats. I love cats when they're above the age of eight or nine. I just absolutely love them. They're so sweet and they're so laid back and they're so mellow and just nothing really seems to bother them. And Buster was so cool. Like the first time I met him, he was just like, what's up? <laughs> he just started chirping at me and purring and he wanted me to hold him. Him. He was so cute. I'm gonna switch to a smaller brush so that I can start using the shade on the lower lash line. Really easy to use. I would say it's almost easier to use than the mattes in her normal motherships, which sometimes I can find difficult to blend out unless you have like specific brushes. But I'm just using really cheap synthetics for this one and it applies really well. The only kind of downside, of course, being that I would, you wanna like handle with care because it's powdery, so don't go digging your brush into the pan. So yeah, I took him home with me. I was like, and I'm not even kidding, not even a month after that, he had an eye ulcer that ruptured and it basically created a hole in his cornea where from the from behind his cornea, there was an ulcer. When it ruptured, it exploded. His, his eye literally exploded. And that was a whole ordeal. I had to take him to emergency. I had to take him to the emergency ophthalmologist and they had to take a graft and actually graft over his cornea. And so after that, he always had a little um, spot on his right eye that looked kind of funny. I always called it his pirate patch because I thought it was so cute. Like, it's like, yes, it was horrible what happened, but it literally slowed him down 0%. Like he does not care that it's there and it healed completely well and never bothered him. Like Buster always had such a great attitude. So the vet was really kind of mystified because he was like, usually if a cat ruptures an ulcer, they'll be really, really, really kind of prone to attacking the vet techs and attacking people because they'll be in so much pain. But he just looked at everyone and he was like, so can you guys give me attention? <laughs> He's so funny. He likes new people and he likes new places, honestly, more than he likes me. So he's the kind of cat you can take him on a walk and he'll walk all the way to the other side of the country if you let him. Like, he doesn't care. Nothing bothers him. Nothing scares him. He's so non-reactive and he finds novelty to be entertaining. So he's in this emergency department. Everyone's freaking out over his eye and he's just sitting there wondering when the vet techs are going to pet him. So then he ends up being surrounded by all these vet techs who are like, obviously he steals their hearts with his adorableness and they all start petting him and he's like, I like it here. <laughs> so he had to stay there overnight after the surgery. They monitored him. He ate all the food they gave him. He peed and pooped in the box and just 
honestly had a grand old time. They were like, yeah, most cats don't act like this overnight in our facilities, but he was like super chill. And I was like, of course he was. You know, eyesight wise, he was completely unimpeded. So I'm gonna try and fit, I wanna use all three of these shimmers on my eyes in varying parts of my eyes. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna, oh, these feel do feel kind of creamy. So I'm going to, and yeah, these are darker than they look in the pan. They're so reflective in the pan. I think I should be able to fit both of these on my eye. Yeah, so I'm gonna take this purple one on the outer part, this on the middle, this on kind of the inner part, this on the obviously is like an inner corner, lower lash line shade. These are really pretty and they do almost feel slightly squishy in the pan. So these do have a very creamy quality to them. So let's see, I, I wanna use a brush for most of this. So let's see how well they use, oh yeah. Lots of pickup on the brush, that is that is good. Until kind of the next summer, it was noticed that he kept getting these recurrent ear infections in his left ear, and so he was like constantly on eardrops. Okay, I got a little bit of fallout, but no big deal. So I ended up switching him to a cat specialty hospital because it was a little bit more expensive, but it's like they only see cats, it's cat specialists, and I thought with how old he's getting, it'll be good to have that higher quality level of care. Having volunteered at a shelter for long enough, when cats start hitting that age, pretty much the first thing on my mind is, okay, when are their kidneys gonna start failing? So I moved him over and they noticed that he had a little spot thing in his ear that at first they called a polyp, and they were like, oh, well, if it's a polyp, we just need to get it imaged and then I can remove it. Like just go in with little, but amounts to essentially pliers and just pull it out. So it took forever, but after like two months of calling around, being put on wait lists and stuff, we were able to get him imaged and the vet we spoke with that worked the specialty clinic with the CT imagery was like, okay, yeah, this is a, this is a tumor. <laughs> so then I was like, okay, well now my cat has an ear tumor. That's a really excellent development in this plot. Wonderful. I'm using the more coppery bronze toned shimmer on the middle of my eyelid. The plum one looks really pretty. It's not as shiny as it looked in the pan. Like in the pan, especially if it catches light, kind of glitter particles in it will reflect back so many different colors, but on the eye, it actually looks a lot more smooth and just nice and just moderately shiny. So then I was like, then it was like, okay, so then from there you can do chemo, you could do radiation, or if it's an ear tumor, you can just remove the entire ear. But then, after they finished doing the CTing and the biopsying and they really looked over the scans, they were like, well, because of the position of the tumor, it's too close to his inner ear. So by then he's like, what, 16? And I was like, I just, I can't put him through chemo. I can't put him through radiation. I just can't. So ultimately with it not being known how aggressive it was or if it was benign, I ultimately opted to go on to just symptom treatment. He was on medications that slowed tumor growth, reduced inflammation. He was on eardrops every morning so that he wouldn't get any more ear infections and he was totally chill with the arrangement. And that was just the way life was for a while. I'm gonna take this kind of more orangey one, kind of almost pinky, I'm gonna put that on the inner part. Never once did he ever have blood work that showed that he had kidney failure. He never developed any other problems. Like he was fine and he liked it that way until finally I started to notice that his breathing was starting to get louder and that's when I that's when we realized that instead of it growing towards the inner part of his ear which would have killed him faster because it would start affecting him neurologically it's growing kind of out and around so he started having visible lumps kind of behind his ear you could see where the skin bulged and then kind of more critically it started growing into his throat uh, at that point I was like well that's kind of when the timer kicks in where you're like okay well now we're kind of really on the clock it was like literally four days before i finally four days before his last day that he just stopped being able to swallow and like i know it's always so hard to have to call the time especially for when you have a cat where every single other part of them is working and they are still so happy and they're such a, such a great mood they have such a great attitude like never once did he ever become seclusive or mean or upset and he never stopped wanting to eat he never stopped pooping in his box like he was always up with the times perky and cheerful it's so hard to have to make the decision because they look like they are so vivacious and so full of life and they want to be with you but you know that you can like you can literally see them try to eat and labor to swallow like you can see it but at the same time he was so happy it was really hard to have to kind of accept that things were gonna change i put this in my mouth where'd it go and then finally he just stopped eating he was like i just i guess he just finally was like all this effort to eat is not 
rewarding me, I'm just gonna stop eating. The options are still there, like you could install a feeding tube. There is there is a way to do that, it's really not the worst thing in the world to manage, but does he want to be on a feeding tube to live longer before the tumor finally blocks off his breathing entirely and then I have to put him down and I'd like I have to like call and be like oh my god it's so urgent my cat can't breathe does he would he want to live like that with a feeding tube waiting until he can't breathe I don't know I guess that it's a very deeply personal question I don't think there's any wrong answers so finally on Wednesday I made the call for the home euthanasia and I felt so guilty after making that call I felt like I had just done the worst thing ever like I thought I was like, I felt like a terrible person. I was like, what have I done? I wanted to call back and cancel it, but I didn't call back. I spent lots of extra time with him. I took some silly photos of him wearing a hat. But yeah, so Friday came and I was just kind of really nervous. I did, I got maybe like two hours of sleep Thursday night. And I sat down I, after I did all the morning chores, it was like mm, 10 a. I like woke up really early too, so it was like it was like uncharacteristically early for me to have finished everything. So it was like maybe nine, and the vet was scheduled to come any time between 11 and one. And so I sat down just to catch a break. So it was like 9:15. I just needed to sit down. I was so tired. I had just fed the cats, done all the meds, and I was like, okay, I just need to sit down. And Buster just suddenly comes out of nowhere, and he just sat right on my lap, and he did not move, and he just fell asleep. And I could just tell that it was really. He was really having to labor to breathe and he just wanted to sleep. He literally just turned into a puddle on my lap. I'm not moving. I'm gonna sit here until the vet shows up. And if he doesn't want to move, if he wants to go on my lap, I will sit here and he will go on my lap. So both my butt cheeks fell asleep. My feet fell asleep, but I didn't move. <laughs> I ended up having to like improvise a backrest of Squishmallows so that my back wouldn't like cramp. And he stayed on my lap the whole time. And then the vet was like, showed up at 12 and I think that him doing that I think really helped me have closure even before the vet arrived because I realized for him to be because you he's cuddly but he's also very independent like he's not gonna cuddle with you for very long because then he's like oh gotta go but he always has so much to do during the day and so for him to just be there on my lap and you could already tell he just was already it's almost like he was just telling me he was like yep he knew what was gonna happen that day and he was fine with it was kind of I think what he was telling me and I was like okay and it made me just suddenly even before the vet arrived I was already feeling like kind of a load was lifted off my shoulders. I was already feeling a lot more relaxed and I was like, okay, okay, today's a good day. It's so great to be able to feel like that. So, um, this is gonna be my eye look. Uh, I like this. It ended up looking a little bit more toned down compared to how sparkly it looks in palette, especially underneath the lights. Kind of see how like it kind of twinkles and sparkles and on my eyes it actually looks a little bit more toned down than I expected, but I like it. So I'm going to curl my eyelashes and I'm going to just put on mascara because I recently got a lash lift and I know my lashes are not much, especially compared to some other blessed beauties on the internet, but I want to enjoy them while I have them. And I just got a new Edel mascara from my mom, so I'm just going to use this really quickly to curl the bottoms. I definitely would say if you have a cat, you should totally consider at-home euthanasia. I would highly recommend it if it's available in your area. In my case, it was significantly more expensive. The yeah, death is not cheap, so just, you know, be prepared, but I feel like, you know, I'm not the kind of person to spend tons and tons and tons and tons of money on like, I don't know, Louis Vuitton sweaters for my cats. Like, I'm not gonna go that far for my cats, but when it comes to giving them a most comfortable departure, I will spare absolutely no expense. So I did at home, and the service we used was great. The vet we had, she was so sweet and so kind the entire time. My lash curler took off some of the eyeshadow. Hold on. <laughs> she was so nice, and she walked us through the whole process. She was she was really nice. She was very validating, very affirming of the entire thing. But then, you guys, craziest thing ever happened. So I've probably talked before about how sweet and darling my Siamese cat Jackson is. He loves other kittens and he always is down to make friends with other cats. So like him, Miso, and Sebastian will all cuddle together to sleep. And he, of course, he's also very bonded with his brother Gates. He wants to make friends with all the cats in the universe. That would be his life goal. But he's never really been one to cuddle up with Buster because Buster's very independent like Buster doesn't mind other cats but he's also very independent he likes his own space assert his boundaries he'll make it known that hey I don't want any other cats in my bed 
he's like, I want this bed for me. And he'll, you know, do the old paw wiggle saying, hey, 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 stay away. So Jackson never really cuddled with Buster. But when the vet arrived, Jackson suddenly got into my lap. And at first I thought, oh, he just wants lap space because Jackson is a total lap magnet. But then he started cuddling with Buster. And like he just, he cuddled with Buster as much as he could. And then um, usually he he gets into my lap i start petting him and he'll start purring and he has like the world's loudest motor it is so nice to listen to it's so relaxing but this time he got into my lap he started cuddling with buster he nuzzled him he stuck his nose in his fur and he started purring on his own i wasn't even petting him and he just started going and his motor just went as loud as he could ratchet it up and his whole body was just vibrating his purring was so loud and so intense and i knew that buster could hear it and i knew that buster knew he was there and he did didn't mind Jackson being there at all. He just kept on snoozing away on my lap and, and Jackson literally did not move at all. He didn't move for the vet. He didn't move when the vet shaved off the little fur off of Buster's leg for the IV. He did not move the entire time. He just stayed. It was like he knew what was going on and he knew what he needed to do. He was like, this is my job. I care for everyone and I'm not leaving. He did not leave until the vet came back with the basket and the flowers. And then when he saw the vet come back with that, he got up and he went to the other room to go, you know, eat and clean and do his business. But up until that point, he stayed with both of us the entire time. I think that more than anything is what really gets to me now even. More than anything is what just makes me, I think that's kind of the most emotional part of it for me was that was what Jackson did for I, both of us, all of us, everyone involved. It just really kind of reiterated to me how special Jackson is to our, to the whole family. And Jackson is so sweet. He has such a big heart for everyone. He loves mm -hmm. people. He loves cats. Mm -hmm. I mean, he'd probably try and make friends with a dog if he had to see a dog. He won't even kill the bugs. I bet he tries to make friends with the bugs before my other guys get to them. And even the vet said that she's never really seen a cat quite like Jackson just acting like that. She was like, that was definitely kind of unusual. And when Buster saw her and interacted with her, he was just purring and chilling and he was looking at her and enjoying the attention he was giving to her. He purred the whole time too. He even purred when she started threading the needle into his leg and she was like, oh, I've never had a cat do that. <laughs> Most cats, she says, hate the injection part, but he was just like purr, purr, purr. I know I'm talking and not putting on any makeup, but this is gonna be my eyes completed. I love how my lashes look. Um, the Edol mascara is kind of more on the natural side. I am still looking for that perfect mascara that will volume that will add like tons and tons of length and volume without also looking oddly spidery. The Edol one is really good for both, but kind of on a more natural scale. And Lash Edol recently raised their prices. I swear it was never $27 and now it is. And I have some blushes I need to get more use out of because I hardly use them and it makes me feel terrible. So today I'm going to use the Romand blush in 05. They did recently renew these packaging and formula. I am not going to be picking up the new ones because I hardly use this as is. It's so small, it just gets lost in my sea of blushes. Yeah, it's a little bit pastel for this look, but I don't like wearing traditional Western blush colors that are beigey and the, like the neutral mauve blushes that are popular in America, like what you see in the drugstore. Yeah, it's super matte. It is quite blurring as well. That's one thing I really like about the Roman formula is how blurring the blush formula is. So yeah, and then after, um, after he passed, I also had a appointment scheduled for Caroline who is my second oldest. I'm moving, I am in the slow process of moving all of my cats over to that cat specialty hospital because the vet I used to take all of them to, I think the service has declined. I highly suspect that like every other vet clinic they have too many patients and they have they've just lost a lot of staff so I have kind of not really been super happy with their service the cat specialty hospital that I'm moving them over to as far as I can tell hasn't really had any staff loss in fact they look like they've been hiring when I looked at the difference in the exam fees I was like it's honestly not that much so I'm moving all my cats there so I took Caroline there and there's a couple of things that she's on now to try and see if we can get her arthritis under control she seems to have a sensitive stomach because if she gets seafood she gets tired yeah. So I've been trying to make sure she's on a diet that has no fish or fish oil even. Take care of the fosters and I, they should be, I don't think I'm going to have them for much longer. Honestly, I do really like having the Siamese here. I do love the Siamese. Those Siamese that came from that hoarding situation, they all kind of have a special place in my little heart. And then I got bit by the reorganization bug like several times. Then one of the volunteers at the shelter 
she told me she used to be a professional organizer and she would love to help me not like she's not gonna organize the house for me it's not like full-on professional services she offered to come over and just kind of help me figure out a direction I want to take the sunroom in and I for the longest time have had this room just be a disarray of storage and exercise mat and just messiness so she came over and she spent about two hours just chatting with me and starting to kind of pull things out basically turn the room inside out to see the potential of the room she really helped me with that and just kind of really kicking my butt getting me started she was like okay we're gonna put this here we're gonna put that here this part of the room is gonna be used for this and then from there I started being like oh okay so then what if I put this thing here and it'll work because it'll be close to that and she was like yeah 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 keep going so that also has been taking up a lot of my time because obviously I can't organize if I'm spending time organizing that is time I am not spending doing other things but it's all good things I need that room to be used more it is really a criminal waste of space and then it makes the rest of the house feel super crammed in because I have an entire room I'm not using and so then I complain that the rest of the house feels so small and it's it's really it's not okay so I used hula glow as my bronzer really like it and you can see the natural glow from my base is kind of shining through the Romand blush which is really pretty so I'm gonna just it's kind of like this pale orange gold I'm gonna use the highlighter inside this blush and glow trio I am really sad I didn't get the Bridgerton one I'll be honest that's neither here nor there I do still I do however have the um celestial odyssey blush and glow trio and I'm going to use golden nectar which is this one right here and my skin is kind of mattified so it's probably not going to be super intense but that's okay because this makeup look is overall pretty low-key especially since I don't have false lashes on and I think I'm going to go ahead and take this on my brow arch too when you like senior animals I had him for three and a half years and my only regret is that I wish I could have met him sooner and for most people, that's a very short time to have a cat. If you get a cat, you usually are like, oh, you're getting them when they're younger. And that's like a, these days, that's like a 15 to 20 year journey that you get to take with your cat. It's an investment, it's a commitment, and it's really fun. But you adopt an older cat and you kind of know that that's not what you're gonna get. You're not gonna get to go on that journey with the cat. You're not gonna get to know the cat that way. But I think it's its own kind of special. Like, I love senior cats. Now that I've gone through actually having to part ways with a senior cat, I'm thinking to myself, is this the kind of life I want for myself? Can I keep going through this? But when I think about him, all I can think about is how much I love senior cats and how much I just want my life to be surrounded by senior cats. So am I gonna keep adopting senior cats as, you know, as my life accommodates for? Yeah, I will, and then I'll go through this again, and I'll be sad again. In the brief time I got to know him, I really got to learn that about myself too, just how much senior cats mean to me, and how much that's just the what I want to do. Like, I'll foster my babies, but they, they go, they graduate, they cut their hair, get a job, and they move out. So I'm gonna use the Morphe backseat love. I heard Morphe's closing down all their stores. I heard they're doing like stealth sales where if you go into their store everything's on sale. Unfortunately, the nearest Morphe store to me is in Charlotte, which is two hours away. You know, I think I will go to Charlotte sometime. I need to go to Ikea anyways, so. And I'll see what's at the Morphe store. My background got deleted because Matcha peed on the blanket up there and the reason she did that was because Stanley's Pred Dose got upgraded because of his tracheitis and so it made him act psycho and he peed on the blanket and I didn't notice and then she peed on the blanket to cover up his pee and I didn't notice until I took my black light and I was trying to figure out what was going on with Matcha if she was okay and then I discovered that there was actually more than one spot on the blanket so the blanket is currently in the wash and I just keep forgetting to bring it back up so right now it's a bare background but uh, I have resolved the problem the mystery was solved and the problem was fixed. Um, Stanley is currently not allowed to come out in Rome anymore until his pred dose can be tapered back down and Matcha no longer pees on it. Problem solved. Nothing like a good mystery. Isn't she the best? Look at how cute she is. I know! Hello! Hello! I've been doing this to you since you were a baby. I remember when she was just three and a half weeks old when I got her. She was like, she was five ounces when I first got her. Okay, and then for my lips, I got this. When Sephora had the one-off 20% off sale, I got like, 
I got three things and one of the three things I got was just kind of a treat to myself more than anything totally unnecessary purchase just my it was one of my handful of comfort splurges in the wake of everything that happened and that would be this Givenchy lipstick La Rouge Sheer Velvet in the shade 51 this formula really caught my eye sheer velvet sounds up my alley right like I feel like people who've watched my videos would know that I'm totally down to try something like that like sheer velvet like yes so I've tried it I've already worn it a couple times it's nice it's really nice I'll show you guys sheer and it is matte but it's just got such a soft finish it reminds me of when Korean matte blurring lipsticks were really trendy like think the Roman Zero Velvet lipsticks which I never got but better because the reason they're not super trendy anymore in Korea is because they tended to just ultimately be really drying and uncomfortable especially when compared to a matte blurring lip tint which basically did the same job as a lipstick but better so brands like Romand either discontinued or and or reformulated theirs because honestly they just never really ended up working out it is semi blurring and it feels really balmy now it doesn't wear very well because it is sheer. It's gonna wear off, especially if you eat, but it's so easy to reapply. Even though it's sheer and it's matte, it is not patchy. It applies an even sheer layer as opposed to a patchy sheer layer or a patchy opaque layer, which is arguably even worse. Don't go out and buy this unless you actually want to splurge on a lipstick. I think just one look at this packaging tells you all you need to know about how much this thing costs. So for me, it's just a cute little treat for myself. I love the pink case. I love the embossing on it. I would never wear a bag with this kind of embossing on it, but I'll take a lipstick with this kind of embossing on it. It's such a pretty shade of blush pink, my favorite shade of pink, and it's just got such a cute little, like it clicks down. It's just, it's, it's really cute. If you're like, oh, all the lip formulas are the same. I want to try something new. I want to treat myself to something special. Then these sheer rouge ones from Givenchy are like actually super unique. Um, this is going to be my finished look. I, my bangs were trimmed very unevenly by yours truly. I, so I zoomed out. So I'm just wearing, I'm just wearing my um, Pusheen hoodie. It's simple. It's easy. It's very casual. And I had a really great experience with this little quince. So I'm very excited for the Star Wars one. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I don't know how enjoyable it is to hear me talk about a cat who is now dead. There was a content warning. So you clicked. Hello. If you have anything you'd like to share in the comments or if you have any questions about the makeup that's on my face today, please feel free to ask. I will answer if I can. I do have lots more content coming. I'm gonna end the video here. So thank you. If you stuck with me all the way till the end, I do thank you so much for watching. This was a doozy, but we had a lot to talk about. <laughs> okay, I'll see you guys in the next video. By the way, I do, yes, I'm well aware that we hit 2K. I don't even know how that happened. I will, um, I was gonna do a Q&A at 1K and then I had surgery, so that never happened. So I may open up Q&A again, but yeah. Bye-bye.